Hello everybody! Welcome to another episode of Reacting Reddit. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Miami Beach Spring Break Apocalypse. Let's get to it. First, what is Miami Beach? We're gonna need some context. And you know how great Wikipedia is for context. Miami Beach is a coastal resort city in Miami-Dade County, Florida, United States. It was incorporated on March 6, 1915. The municipality is located on natural and man-made barrier islands between the Atlantic Ocean and Biscayne Bay, the latter of which separates the beach from the mainland city of Miami. The neighborhood of South Beach, comprising the southernmost 2.5 square miles 6 .5, oh, of Miami Beach, along with downtown Miami and the Port of Miami, collectively form the commercial center of South Florida. South Beach, also known as Sobe, or simply the beach, the area from Biscayne Street, also known as South Point Drive, one block south of 1st Street to about 23rd Street, is one of the more popular areas of Miami Beach. Although topless sunbathing by women has not been officially legalized, female toplessness is tolerated on South Beach and in a few hotel pools on Miami Beach. Before the TV show Miami Vice helped make the area popular, Sobe was under urban blight, with vacant buildings and a high crime rate. Today, it is considered one of the richest commercial areas on the beach, yet poverty and crime still remain in some places near the area. Miami Beach has been regarded as a gay mecca for decades, as well as being one of the most LGBT-friendly cities in the United States. Miami Beach is home to numerous gay bars and gay-specific events, and five service and resource organizations. After decades of economic and social decline, an influx of gays and lesbians moving to South Beach in the late 1980s to mid-1990s contributed to Miami Beach's revitalization. The newcomers purchased and restored dilapidated Art Deco hotels and clubs, started numerous businesses, and built political power in city and county government. Now let's get to the news! What's the apocalypse? Well, it all started when... Let's, let's, let's start with something from NPR. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says he is lifting all restrictions on businesses statewide that were imposed to control the spread of the virus that caused COVID-19. Most significantly, that means restaurants and bars in the state can now operate at full capacity. Up to now, restaurants and bars in Florida could serve customers indoors at 50% of legal occupancy. DeSantis said his new executive order lifts that restriction straight statewide, although local governments can keep additional limits in place if they're justified for health and economic reasons. Every business has the right to operate, DeSantis said. Some of the locals can do reasonable re regulations, but you can't just say no. DeSantis also said his order would stop cities and counties from fining people for not wearing mandated face coverings. He said fines and other penalties imposed so far would be suspended. Now, that happened, and then tons of people flocked in. So, let's read from Breitbart now. Due to spring breakers pouring into Miami Beach, local officials have declared a state of emergency, imposing a curfew and shutting down causeways as part of a greater effort to curb the crowds and excessive partying. Miami-Dade States stands as one of Florida counties hit hardest by the coronavirus. I fucking hate it when people say Chinese coronavirus. I really hate it. But that did not stop thousands of spring breakers from flocking to Miami beaches and the entertainment district over the weekend to party. As a result, Miami Beach interim city manager Roel J. Aguila declared in a state of emergency, in light of the Miami Beach Police Department's significant concerns related to larger-than-expected spring break crowds, per a March 20th order, which imposed a 8 p.m. curfew, and shut down certain paths for at least 72 hours. Miami Beach officials voted on Sunday. Oh, now we're, we're on to an article by Route Reuters! Miami Beach officials voted on Sunday to extend an 8 p.m. curfew and emergency powers for up to three weeks to help control unruly and mostly maskless crowds that have converged on the party destination during spring break. Thousands of people have packed the city's Art Deco Cultural District, causing bedlam and lawlessness in recent days. When university students typically celebrate spring break, leading some businesses to close voluntarily out of concern for public safety. 
Mayor Dan Delber told an emergency meeting of the city commission that all manner of out of town and out of state visitors, not just college students, were filling the streets since Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on February 26th called the state an oasis of freedom from coronavirus restrictions. It looked like a rock concert. All you could see was wall-to-wall -wall people. Interim city manager Roel Aguila told the commission, this is not a typical spring break crowd. These are individuals coming into the city to engage in lawlessness and anything goes party attitude, Aguila said. Now from the New York Post, Miami has extended its highly unusual emergency measures, including 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfews and causeway closures, through April 12th to quell the crowds of unruly spring breakers who have flocked to the party city in defiance of COVID-19 safety rules, according to reports. The Miami Beach City Commission voted to extend the curfew during a last-minute emergency meeting on Sunday. A day after interim city manager Roel Aguila declared a state of emergency, the Miami Herald reported. More than 1,000 partiers have been arrested since February, with more than half of them from out of state, Aguila said. He added that many are coming to engage in lawlessness and an anything goes party attitude. Officials noted that the throng of spring breakers weren't the usual college crowd, but adults looking to let loose in one of the few states fully open during the pandemic. Next, by the Washington Examiner. A quote, I was on the brink of losing the business. That's how bad it was when nobody was coming around. Mavronis, owner of Steve's famous diner in Daytona Beach, told the Washington Examiner in an interview, nothing was coming in. Mavrona said his company suffered huge revenue losses last year, forcing his business to adapt to the new circumstances. Normally, I averaged $3,000 to $5,000 in sales a day. I went down to $300 in sales, he continued. I had two employees and me just doing takeout, just hustling, doing Facebook advertising, trying to get people to call in so I could get some revenue going because I have fixed expenses. But now, the chef and business owner fears no more, in part due to thousands of young adult revelers who have descended on the beachfront town in recent weeks, jump-starting sales from his previously battered establishment. I haven't seen business like this since the 90s when MTV was here, he said. It's a lot of people in Daytona Beach this year, and my numbers are through the roof. There's a lot of young people, a lot of families. Mavronis doesn't mind the influx. In fact, they're awesome, he said. The spring breakers, who may be a nuisance to some, are working wonders on the Sunshine State's tourism economy. President of Vi Visit St. Pete Clearwater, Steve Hayes, said the co-eds are partially responsible for filling 90% of the area's lodging industry last weekend, up from an abysmal 50% the year prior during lockdowns. In Miami Beach, the situation is far more dire. Upwards of a thousand people have been arrested after days of partying devolved into violent clashes with law enforcement over a mandatory 8 p.m. curfew. The city has declared a state of emergency and since extended the curfew. NPR states, while Miami Beach has taken its own local precautions against the coronavirus, Florida Republican Governor Ron DeSantis lifted most restrictions statewide in September and limited the extent to which local governments could enforce tighter restrictions, including mask mandates and lockdowns. As a result, Florida has seen much more normal activity than elsewhere in the country, with businesses and schools largely open. But in Miami Beach, officials and residents say the last few weeks have brought a new level of chaos. According to USA Today, local police made 163 arrests over seven days. According to a local news report, the Clevelander Hotel, a popular party spot, will close its restaurant and bar for several days after fights broke out. Last week, 150 partiers were arrested at a party that turned rioter, riotous, riotous is a word now, at the Katina restaurant, according to NBC Miami. And an employee of the social club, a restaurant and bar next to Clevelander, described a stampede that led to property being trashed. 
Last weekend, there was a stampede very close to us, and people spilled onto our property, running inside, into the restaurant, into our kitchen, into our lobby. Jessica Francos, Vice President of Operations for Jesta Hotels, told the Miami Herald, We've seen the situation getting out of control, and then yesterday, it happened again. Vice adds, Now, local black leaders and legal advocates are concerned about the use of excessive force against the predominantly black college students seen partying in the streets of the Florida vacation destination. I understand that people are angry that there are kids gathering together and partying, but government Ron DeSantis has told the entire country that Florida is open for business. Stephen Hunter Johnson, the chair of the Miami-Dade County Black Affairs Advisory Board, told Vice News, I firmly believe black people are entitled to the same treatment as anyone else. Glendon Hole, the chairman of the Miami Beach Black Affairs Committee, doesn't think the young spring breakers are being treated fairly either. He told the Miami Herald that he didn't see what led police to use force, but that the crowds were mostly peaceful at first. The truck showed up and nobody knew why the truck was there. Truck, by the way, is a militant truck, like, like, you know, Humvee escort kind of situation, right? The truck showed up and nobody knew why the truck was there, he told the outlet. When we tried to calm things down, that hyped things up. The city of Miami Beach is essentially demonizing hundreds of thousands of people for the actions of a few, he said. I'm not pretending these are not problems, but nothing at this point warrants pepper bullets. The things that are going viral here are essentially misdemeanors. Miami Beach Mayor Dan Gleber, Gelber, however, denied that police response had anything to do with race. Well, fucking, of course they did. Like, what? Why do we even need to bring that up? Like, when the hell is a governor or police gonna be like, oh, you know, you're right, we may be overstepping. Let's review this and see if we're really being... <laughs> oh my god, oh, f funny joke. We're not targeting a group of people. We're targeting conduct, Gelber told local news outlet WPLG Local 10. We don't like these arrests because it endangers officers and arrestees who may be drunk or high and bystanders. The only option we have right now is to make sure we can control our streets. All right, everybody, you know what's up now. Let's see what random people online have to say about the situation. This comment by Ashpanda24, according to the article, the police are noticing that it's just not college kids who've taken to partying during spring break. People have decided to go to Florida because Florida hasn't been locked down. Also, a lot of people just got stimulus money. Flymia says, FYI, this does not have much to do with COVID. It is fights, violence, and just massive disorderly conduct. Some bars and restaurants have decided to just shut down because the mess is not work. Okay. This has a lot to do with COVID. Why do you think that historically huge crowds are flocking to a one specific state to party? It's because they can't party in their own state. It's totally relevant to COVID, you idiots. Jesus Christ. All right. Red Wolf DC says, this is true. Places like Panama City, by comparison, are the usual spring break parties happening right now, but less violence and mayhem. The crowds in Miami aren't even all college kids. Some of them are vandalizing, walking out on massive tabs. Lots of businesses would rather just shut down. But my point here is that we have a whole country worth of people who are fed up with being locked up, even whether it's right to be locked up or not. But, you know, the reality is a lot of people are fed up and frustrated. They've been stuck inside for a year or gotten yelled at for going outside and trying to party and shit. And they just want to party because they're young people. And apparently that's all we care about, I guess. My point's that a business has to be very careful. There's a point where there's too many people, even if most of them are paying clients. Once you have a crowd that's so big, you can't escape. That's a big problem. There's a reason why fire code prevents crowds from getting that big and makes it a finable offense if a building has more than its allotted amount of people. And it's because 
it's so much easier for violence and problems to happen because when people are members of crowds that are so big they they know that they can get away with stuff so people will take advantage of the mayhem so it, it's not true that this has nothing to do with covid because it has a lot to do with covid because if it wasn't for all the lockdowns because of covid i'm not saying those lockdowns shouldn't happen i'm just saying if it wasn't because of these lockdowns, people would be partying in their own areas more. But now they're like, yo, we don't give up about COVID. We don't care. We live in an area where we're all locked down. Hey guys, let's all pile up in this SUV, all 10 of us, and go to Florida and party because we don't give a fuck about this stuff because it's not our area. That's what's happening, right? It's not just college kids, but it's also absolutely relevant to COVID. What is wrong with people? How can you think that things aren't being affected by COVID when COVID is the biggest pandemic that our earth has experienced in the past hundred years? Come on! Indirect causes is a real thing, guys. Jesus fucking Christ. What is wrong with people? All right. Anyway, moving on. Triffle Old says, this is nothing new. This is exactly what happened every spring break in Miami Beach. The only difference is now it's a national story because of COVID. Many residents in South Beach have tried to stop bars from being open late this time of year. It never works because money, 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 money. Oh, whoa, that is a really weird photo in the background. No idea what that is, but it looks like a weird thing eating a baby but I don't know that's freaky anyway H says apparently the words spring break mean to many that COVID just doesn't exist anymore this is one of the many reasons why America is the object of scorn and ridicule across the international community these days because we seem to be an inherently stupid people <laughs> well I hate to break it to you, but uh, America, like the fact that it's even referred to as America, what about South America? What about Latin America? Why the fuck is one part of the Americas taking all the credit for the name of a whole other fucking continent with millions and millions, hundreds of millions of other people? Yet when we say American, we're specifically referring to a United States person. So fuck that. This is the reason why USA people are sometimes the object of scorn and ridicule from the international community. But uh, yeah, well, I don't know about you guys, but I was raised overseas and uh, people have been ridiculing the United States for all of its hypocrisy for basically as long as the United States has existed. So this isn't nothing new, guys. <laughs> NMF says, COVID is not why they are enforcing new curfews. I live here. The place is completely ransacked. There are insane parties every day. People are getting shot left and right, and there are fights constantly, and the beaches are littered with trash. It has absolutely no- Oh, okay. Maybe I was too harsh earlier. I was assuming that the commenter earlier who said it had nothing to do with COVID was saying that the people being there had nothing to do with COVID. But I see now that they were probably actually saying that the, the lockdowns and the curfew itself has nothing to do with COVID. And I, I can see why they're saying that because the curfews are in response to the violence, not in response to COVID. So apologies for my misunderstanding there. Moving on. The Bigger Bill adds, from the article, the types of crowds that have descended on the popular South Florida destination are not made up of the regular college-age students officials are used to, Mayor Dan Gilber and City Manager Roel Aguila said. I don't see this as sort of a spring break thing because I don't think these are college kids, Gilber said. I think it changes the nature of what we're in front of here. I think there are very few places that are open as we have been and our state has been open. And there are even precious fewer places as beautiful as ours that are open. Michelle Olivietti says, Actually, many see him doing good things and speak of Florida as a boomtown with expanding economy. For those that die, those are the breaks. I find it so depressing that this current attitude, it's better to have people die than have a depressed economy. 
It shouldn't have to come to be this, either or, only two options to choose from. I think in the future, it will be seen as we can lock down temporarily to contain the virus, or just let it run amok, like in 1918. Historians will say we did neither or both. <laughs> Dude, we didn't just let it run amok in 1918. We literally created the perfect war-torn world with millions of people and soldiers being stuffed into boats and transported together, making huge hotbeds for it. Like, imagine all of these partiers, the same number of people every single week were being put in a boat, put in a training camp for weeks at a time, and then being shipped off to Europe. Like, it was bad, way, way, way worse. At least now, like, like we have an understanding of it. You realize that back in 1918, oh my god, there was a lot of shit going around that made it worse. Like, so much worse. We didn't just do nothing in 1918. As a, as hu a humanity, as a, a population, we actively did everything possible to make it as bad as possible. Obviously, we weren't doing that on purpose, but <laughs> don't compare it to 1918. It was a very, very different time. Butch, Butch You Did It says, this is straight up New York East Coast trash migrated over to Miami. I refuse to go to those areas because it's just like New York with palm trees and shit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Hyper Punch says, I feel this. East Coast people have a certain something about them I don't find on the West Coast. <laughs> I fucking love the world, man. Look at this. Racism without talking about racism. These, these people are being racist and prejudiced purely by geographical area. They're not even... I mean, I guess that's better than saying, I mean, like, think about it. Th let me rephrase these sentences. If you don't, I'm going to reread these. This is straight up New York East Coast trash migrated over to Miami. I refuse to go to those areas because it's just like New York, except it has palm trees and shit. And then I feel this. East Coast people have a certain something about them I don't find on the West Coast. West Coast, best coast. Let me rephrase this for you so you can see the inherent racisms and prejudice, right? This is straight up black people trash migrated over to Miami. I refuse to go to those areas because it's just like where the black people live except with palm trees. Sounds pretty racist, doesn't it? And then let's add the next one. I feel this. Black people have a certain something about them that I just don't find with white people. West Coast or white people best oh my god i don't even need to say that one you see what i'm saying these people are fucking prejudiced bigots like totally you can't make blanket statements about an entire coast where millions of people live like how fucking ignorant are you come on critical scion says Haha, this is the spring break like no other is still hype language despite the vote to keep the curfew i feel like they literally can't bring themselves to go directly on record telling people to stay away. Leon91 says, it's a virus, not bacteria. So I don't think resistant is the right word. It's just different, not fighting back against the vaccine or anything. Well, well, that's not really, you can be resistant to viruses and just like you can be resistant to certain bacteria. Like, I don't know. I, I think that this person is probably just thinking of the fact that bacteria can develop resistance to antibiotics while viruses can't develop a resistance to a vaccine the virus changes into a different form of the virus and then you need a new vaccine for it so it's not that it becomes resistant it's that it literally physically becomes a new virus and then of course you need a vac new vaccine for the new virus you know but whatever anyway moving on actually that's probably it after this 80k rain 11 says and the thing you're not talking about every time someone is infected with covid they become a covid virus factory shedding newly created virus each time there is a newly created virus there is a chance of mutations so you're pointlessly creating even more contagious or more deadly strains and the current vaccines may become less well will become less effective over time and they already are becoming less effective over time just like the cold covid vaccines will have to be continuously made and monitored and administered for the upcoming years. That's just life, I guess. 
Rock On Florida, and every place that people ignore the virus. Pseudonym 01101 says that's not actually true at all, especially in states with leaders that understand the danger of variants popping up. Nobody has moved on there. Also, countries in Europe are having to lock down yet again, which is far from moving on. Sure, states and count countries with shitty leaders may have moved on, so to speak, but I'd say the majority of the US is still taking precautions. And why wouldn't they? Especially being so close to getting tons of people vaccinated. That would be idiotic. Why are people surprised that we do idiotic things? You know? We're both idiots. Both meaning the bipolar sides of our ridiculous system. We all do idiotic things. You listening to this, I bet you think I do idiotic things, and that's okay. I'm not worried about it. I understand that you can't expect the best out of people unless you really want to be fed up and irritated for the rest of your life. You just gotta expect people to shit on each other all the time and then bitch and moan about it. And when you meet people who don't, it's extra, extra special. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. If you wanna give us some support, please do one of the four following. Watch another one of our videos, comment on this video, subscribe to our channel, or reach out to us to let us know that you wanna make some kind of content using our tools. We make thumbnails with an automated tool that lets you edit and look at 16 different thumbnail options at once for your video, giving you maximum ability to pick the best thumbnail for you. And we also have this awesome reader tool, which actually is learning to create a video from your words live while you speak. It's dope. So with that, see you next time. Ciao.